with it being dark last night we couldn't really tidy up around the chipper so we're just going to do it now i'm just going to scrape up around it so we can dig it out there's a few little bits and bobs left to go through so andrew's just doing that now this is one of them jobs that you can't really do one-handed but i'll try and then hopefully we'll be able to dig the chipper out move it over and do some double chipping later oh the sun's too bad that's better now, we can see the wheels. Try and push that away from the back belt as well. With the weather getting cold, I'm gonna put Paulo as an office off us. He uh, does pest control, so he uses this for washing things down. Um, like, I don't know what you'd call it, well, grain stores, I suppose, and different mills. So, you might have a trace of water left in the pump, so I'll put it under cover so it doesn't get any frost and it'll damage the pump. Need a bit of wood chip for the dog field in one of the puddles, so just filling it off the belt of the chipper freshly. Should have knocked the pile flat first, really, shouldn't I? Because the pile was too high. Andrew's just gonna put me some in now with the grab. Hopefully. Nice full bag. Looks tidy that Merlot next to the chipper. The yard's empty, apart from French, but a load of shoveling away. Got a nice pile of chip as well for winter now. Two bags of chips there now, do you get it? No fish though. Just at the dog field now, Chester. This has got a lot of mud and some people are saying that the dogs are getting muddy so that's what we brought some chip for problem is i filled the bags too full and they're dead heavy i should have filled it with dry chip maybe or half filled them and i'm going to try and drag it down the ramp of the trailer and then put it in this here without getting a hernia looks like we've got plenty of moles here digging the field up cracking day jess is wearing himself out poo picking Class. I think it's as soon as shovel stone and wood chip knackered. She just can't get the shovel into it. Test the update, it's chewing a stick. Come on, oh you go, oh you go, all the way, all the way, come on, come on, don't be scared, come on, come on. Ready, throw it down the hill, where you are. Go! Fetch it! I should tie him out, run up and down the hill. Come on! Drop! that ratchet strap alone. In a field of wheat now, this really struggled with with the uh, plug problem and also because it was one of the ones we didn't have the proper pressure on the drill. So we've got these sort of carpets of where they chopped straw and slug activity. So we did come through and patch up and we've got some little bits coming through now. You can see it's been stripped by pigeons, not pigeons, slugs which is a bit of a shame, chewed off. But I think, I think it is a crop here. It, it looks worse because of the stubble and direct drill, but it's it's not ideal. I'm a bit disappointed in this field. And, and may, maybe in the spring, we might take a decision then whether to keep it or not, but where it's good, it's very good. So, top tip. Make sure you don't press the button on the drill to take the culture pressure off, which is ideal if you're getting stuck. You can press that and it drops the pressure and whatever. But if you have pressed it, it should maybe bleep at you and tell you that it's been pressed. Otherwise, you can start drilling and not realise. This side of the field's not too bad. 
but just over there where it gets a bit clay yeah, and it's obviously not buried it got soil compacted around it so the slugs have just been able to eat it or the birds or the pigeons or whatever good news as well if you text tractor to 70450 it will donate five pounds to our charity tractor run for all the hay children's hospital load of oil sea rape come in and a noisy plane Take the car off charge. Got a bearing gone on the boiler, so I'm just going to pick one up now. Try and change it. These ball bearings have fell out of there because that bearing inside there has gone. So I'm just going to try and unbolt it now, and I'll put this new one in. You learn something new every day. So that number there, FC210, times the end number by five, and it tells you the inner race. So times that by five, and that's 50 mil, and that's what that inner race is. So if it was an FC208, that would be a 40 mil in a race. Just have to split this chain, undo that grub screw there, hopefully undo them bolts around that, hopefully that will slide off, leave that behind, then slide that bearing off the shaft and that sprocket, and then put it all back together. Just hope it comes off the shaft easy. That split pin sort of snaps jagged and it won't come out the hole, so it's going to cut the end off with the with the whizzer and then I can put a new one in hopefully that'll come out now he says there we go so put that there with the other one this is the auger that screws the wood chip into the boiler that's that's basically the bearing's gone on and when it used to jam up you used to put a ratchet thing not a ratchet a stilt on the end of it and turn the shaft backwards and that wasn't very successful so I welded a socket to the end of it we just turn it with one of them breaker bars now so I'll just turn it and I'm just grinding off where it's chewed up from the teeth of the stilton over time so that this slides off nice and easy put a crowbar knocked in there as a wedge and then I'm trying to hammer in here but I've not got much of a swing it's just starting to move now but once I've got that bearing off I've then got to get that sprocket off and then I've got to get that bearing off and put all three back on. Got one half off now, rub that now. I have to polish it a bit with the hammers, hit it. And try and get that sprocket off. And then try and get that one off. The sprocket came off by hand, so about here. So just need a quick, a quick tap. There we go, that's that off now. I thought I was in for an easy ride because that is loose on the shaft. The problem is I can't get the keyway out of there, it's solid. I'm going to have to get a punch and try and get underneath it and flick it out. That come out relatively easy once I've got a chisel underneath it. Now I've just got to get this loose enough. Just twist slightly. It says, get that down off this shaft. Got it off relatively easy. Quick push with the chisel and that's off. Got to hope that them bolts that were captive on the inside of there. Otherwise I'm going to, have to slide that out slightly to get a spanner on the back. And then line it all back up again. Because at the moment it's held in just by these two bolts on this plate here so we'll try it they're actually not captive i.e welded on the back because they're wobbling but because i did it with the gun you did it that quick then it spun the nuts off without the back turning just got to get the other one on gently without them falling inside that trough just realized they give me the wrong house and it looks different because that's square and that's round but the bolt holes are different so i'm just going to save going back i'll just pop the bearing out of this house and put it to that house and hopefully it should just spin and come out of these grooves and that one should spin come out of them grooves and then drop in there i hope got the old one out just twist the new one out now just line it up to the slot there you go and then that should now go in there and then twist into the center and then we'll have that in that housing then save going back to the shop it should just spin around there now just give it a slight tap Slide it on there now. So I had to reach down the bottom there for that bolt. Push that back in now. Tighten them up with a nut gun. Put the keyway back in. Slide the sprocket on. Put the chain on. Put that bearing on, and off we go again. Hopefully. Right, I've got the chain back on now. Probably a little bit slack. I might adjust that. That's lined up with that. And then I'll put the other sprocket, the other bearing on now. Quite a collection in the shed now, I'd say. Anyway, I'm going to test the batteries with the circuit tester on the 4494. See if one of them's low, because that might be why it wouldn't start yesterday. So 
So let's see what it's reading on here. Got that onto the earth. That one onto the battery. 13. It's flickering a bit. 12.6 volts. Let's go around to the side, see what the other one's reading. So waiting for the panel for that, the guys don't run me back about that actually. The MB track. Now the battery this side this one's right near the start about to oh, I've got to squeeze in let's have a look so we put the earth onto there that one onto there 14 volts mm. so the other side is a little bit lower but I wouldn't think it'd be too bad still out reading over 12 volt squeeze out let's get on and try it Someone had messaged me to say that his mate from college had had clean these ready for the auction. Oh, that's the point. So the radio's left on. What's the ignition must. Ah, if you turn the ignition all the way back. Ah, lot off in the middle. If you turn it all the way back, you get ignition. So I bet the battery's flat. So let's put a jump pack on this battery here that was reading low and see what it does. Now this battery looks older than the other one, so maybe this could be the one. Let's climb in now and see what happens. No, still nothing. Someone was saying about the PTO lever, that's definitely disengaged. Maybe I'll put it on charge overnight and see. But that is pretty powerful, that jump pack. There's something going on. I don't know whether you can hear that, but it keeps clicking in and out. Mm. I'm not sure whether it's 24 volt or 12, because it's got two batteries on it. Depends whether they're wide in series or parallel. Well, that's making a funny noise. We'll put it on charge and see what happens. But when I put ah, to be fair, when I put the jump, uh, when I put this on it, it was only reading 12 volt, not 24. So it was in parallel. Oh no, we'd have to have the battery turn on each one, wouldn't I? Yeah, I think it's something to do with the ignition being left on, and maybe Tom Pemberton didn't break it. To be honest, it could be reading 12.4 volts, but have no amps in it at all. So I'll put it on charge overnight and then try it tomorrow and see if that's what it is. Loads of guesses, yes, so not guesses, suggestions, what we should call the 4494. The best one was one I'd actually thought of was a uh, Big Red. But the reason I'm not going to call it Big Red is, what if I buy a quad track? Because that'll be bigger. Unless we just call that the quaddy. But yeah, I think Big Red's probably the best suggestion, along with Bertha. So. But 4494, it's, it's a mouthful compared to sort of 1455 rolls off the tongue easier. So may, maybe we could call it Big Red for now. Anyway, I'm going to get the, bank, the battery charger for it. I think that battery is dead because when I was undoing this battery terminal, the spanner hit the this rail here, which should be an earth, and there wasn't a single spark out of it. So I'll just put it on chuckle charge overnight, so we'll see what it does in the morning. Got some beans in the dryer there, cleaning them up, ready for going to seed. Someone's left the telly on that in all the dust. I wonder who that was. You see it floating in the air. Andrew finished the chipping this morning and then now he's done some double chipping and filmed what we call the double chip bay now. So that should keep us going for next week for the drying floors and the boiler. There's supposed to be five load of oil seed rate coming in today, but only one's turned up. So Andrew shoved that up, so hopefully the other few will come tomorrow. The fan is running in this pile of wheat as well, so that obviously means that the wheat is more than five degrees than the current ambient air temperature, but I think the ambient air temperature is about seven, so the wheat must be over 13 degrees. We could tell by that sensor on the computer anyway, but you can hear the fan pulling cold air through it now, conditioning it so it's, it keeps its storage better. Right, the day has run away on me and it's now dark for doing the birthday bumpers. Anyway, firstly, Florence and Henry Haycap. It's not the real second name, but everyone knows that's what his, the dad sells Haycaps. Uh, I need to give a shout out to Daniel Mather as well. He's in remission from cancer after two years, so fingers crossed that he's okay now. So Brian Penny, Ashley Burke, Archer Channel, them two, it, it's no use telling me last night that it's your birthday today and can you have a mention? 
after I've put yesterday's video out. So if you're gonna, if you want to mention, do it on the morning of the birthday. I'm gonna have to start being a bit more stricter with the rules, otherwise we end up with a full bumper like we've got today and some people's birthday was yesterday. Got Ollie Merchant, Jamie Clements, Aaron Shields, Louise Webb's apparently 50, but I don't know if someone's trying to wind her up there and Cooper Gibson. Anyway, happy birthday to all you guys. When I do the birthday shout outs, what I do is every day when I get the messages on Instagram in the morning, I screenshot them and then I remember them for that day. But if you tell me the night before, they can get lost. And if also, if you tell me at nine o'clock last night, it's your birthday today and can you have a shout out, then that means technically today's not your birthday. So it just doesn't really make sense. So if you're going to do it, send it on Instagram in the morning and then hopefully I can fit it in. But not too late in the afternoon where I've already edited it and done the video as well. Because that, that's another favourite people sending me after I've edited it, which is what. What David Felton did to me yesterday for his dad Russell, he sent it me after I'd edited it, so that's why I had to write it in afterwards and I had to go back in and start editing again. So yeah, try and stick to the morning of the day of the birthday and don't say it's my partner's birthday on the 6th of December, today or wherever, because then I will never remember by then. So it needs to be on the day, rant over. Anyway, that's probably it for today. Bit of a bit of a random day, doing some stuff at the dog field, sorting out the boiler, trying to see if that case will start see what tomorrow brings but it's been dry which is good yeah i forgot to say actually today also i've been doing the mapping and sorting out for the tractor run with all the hay so here's a picture of the map now it's on the 19th of december and we're going to leave here at 6 15 but no spectators coming to the yard or water lane it's busy enough with tractors i said this last year and we still ended up with everyone double parked down the road and we couldn't get out of the yard so please if you're going to spectate don't come to the yard i'm hoping that the village hall is going to open up and they're going to do some sort of eat event there with food and somewhere to park but keep watching this space i can't get involved with the organizing that because i'm busy enough organizing the tractors but hopefully the volunteers from there will sort that out and we can we can get the pizza oven that's been here in the day feeding the tractor drivers to move up to there as well if they do something and we might even take like say the big red over there and whatever else we've got that's not participating in the run up there for people to have a look at and maybe a father christmas would be a good idea if they want to do it the quiz question the other day off the chipper sorry was that guide it was £94, so lots of people guessed more, funnily enough, but yeah, £94. So anyway, thanks for watching today. I'll see you all tomorrow. We're going to do the Bateman baby gender reveal on Saturday, but what do people think? What might it be? Red or blue?